Our scripture lessons for today, the first one comes from Romans 8, verses 18 and 28. Romans 8, 18 says, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. And verse 28, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. And the second reading comes from 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10, which says this, And the God of all grace, who called you to His eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will Himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. May the Lord bless the reading of His Word today. Our What is a Disciple sermon series continues again today in our definition that has been building over the weeks, little by little, so far, is this. A disciple is a person who experiences the forgiveness and acceptance of God and follows the life and teachings of Jesus Christ. Which is to say that as disciples we come to faith in Jesus, we experience Jesus and His forgiveness, and His acceptance, and thereby God's forgiveness and acceptance, and then we commit ourselves to follow this Jesus in our lives according to His teachings and example. A disciple also is a person who demonstrates the fruits of the Spirit. That is to say that disciples are gifted by the Holy Spirit, they are, for they are branches of the vine that is Jesus Christ, and by that presence with Him, and by our connection with Him, we produce spiritual fruit for Him, which, which it, uh, proves that we have internalized this Jesus. We are affected by Him. We are constantly being changed because of Him. And we produce thereby evidence in our words and our actions that define us as we seek to follow Him and learn from Him and grow as His disciples. A disciple also is a person who shares in the life and the witness of a community of disciples. And so what that means is, as disciples, we see the importance of living out our faith with the rest of the disciples, with our church family, with, with sharing in worship and prayer and proclaiming the Word and studying the Word and together and celebrating the sacraments together and witnessing to our faith together as we reach out and serve and give voice to the gospel message with our collective actions. Last Sunday we added to the definition. A disciple is a person who serves in some form of ministry every day. We looked at Galatians 5 verses 13 and 14 and also at 2 Timothy chapter 4 verses 1 and 2 and, and there we determined that a disciple uh, being a disciple means we wake up each day and we know that we are called to ministry. We look at our mission field, we see what we can do and we do it. And then we go to bed and we get up the next day and we do it again. And the next day after that. And the next day after that. And so now we're ready to add our next part of our growing definition of what is a disciple. And a disciple is a person who participates in God's suffering and transformation of the world. And gang, I have to confess to you today uh, that this particular part of our growing definition of what a disciple is had me wrestling longer and harder than any of the others because we are talking about suffering. And I don't know about you, but I don't like to talk about suffering. I don't like to think about suffering. And I sure as heck don't like to participate in suffering. And I'm guessing that you feel the same way. But we know all too well, don't we, that there is suffering to be had. It's there and, and, and it doesn't escape any of us for very long. And, and if, if being a disciple, being a believer and a follower of Jesus, does not make us exempt from suffering, does it? And I feel sorry for you if you became a Christian because you thought that if you did, you would somehow escape suffering in this life because I bet you've been, been disappointed more than once or twice along the way, haven't you? There is suffering in this life and in this world. And some of that suffering is ours to have, isn't it? For whatever reason, God has allowed us to suffer at times. And, and, 
And uh, theologically, some find that the existence of suffering causes a problem. It, it, it's the fact that it exists in this world that for some people is a sign that, that somehow God is absent or, or that God is not good. Because how could a good and a holy and a present God allow suffering? What, why doesn't he do something about this suffering? that's going on around us and, and is happening to us. But I do not think that the existence of suffering means that God is absent. Because what I've seen, and I'm hoping it's what you have seen as well, is that God is found in the suffering. So many times I've noticed that God is oftentimes right there in the suffering with His children. And another thing about suffering, and, 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 and maybe you've noticed this as well, maybe you've noticed that God uses suffering because God brings forth good out of suffering. God redeems suffering. And the truth of the matter is, and, and we just came out of a season where we've reflected upon this, haven't we? God brought forth our redemption through suffering, didn't He? Through Jesus suffering and dying on the cross prior to His resurrection that we not too long ago celebrated, right? God saved us through suffering. Amen. So here's what we see when we reflect upon this part of our definition of a disciple as being a person who participates in God's suffering and transformation of the world. Number one, God himself participates in suffering. I'm hoping you remember these passages. I didn't read them to you. You can look them up for yourself. Maybe, but maybe you remember these. Uh, Deuteronomy 3.16 in the Old Testament, reiterated again in Hebrews 13 verse 5 in the New Testament. The word says, never Will I leave you? Never will I forsake you. Gang, God is right here in the midst of your suffering. He will not abandon you to it. If you cry out to God in the midst of your suffering, He will be there with you. And you've got to believe this, that His presence is with you, that, that He will be there to encourage you and strengthen you and uphold you. And do not think for a minute that, that the Lord is somehow missing your suffering, that He is somehow numb to your suffering, that He is somehow a stranger to suffering, because the fact is God participates in suffering Himself. And we know this. We know this to be true in the life of in the person of Jesus Christ. God stepped down off of His throne in glory and took on human flesh. Fully God became fully man. And with that, He took on all that suffering that goes with being a human being down here in a creation that is awaiting its redemption. I want you to know something today. God has had His heart broken. He too has been rejected. He too has been betrayed. He too was poor. He too was hungry, right? He too felt pain. He too tasted death. He too participated in suffering. It was part of the way. Number two, God transforms the world through suffering. There, there are times when suffering and transformation go together. If you've ever gone through some tough times, right? And, and when you got to the end of it, did you realize that you are now in a better place and you couldn't have gotten there had you not suffered through the journey you were on. Has that ever happened to you? Have you, have, have you ever suffered through trials and tribulations and, and had your thoughts and assumptions challenged and, 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 
and, and, and you were pushed to your limits, your faith tested in such ways, and, and, and you wouldn't have gotten there. You wouldn't have gotten where you needed to be had you not suffered your way through that. Has God ever shown you something? Has God ever taught you something that had you not suffered a bit with it, you just couldn't have gotten it? Amen, right? Now, I am not saying that all suffering is caused by God. I, please don't hear something that I'm not saying, you know? Uh, I don't think God causes all pain and suffering. I think we bring that on ourselves a lot of the time. Amen, anybody? But what I'm saying is that God causes good to come from suffering. God brings transformation out of suffering. And you see, with God, our suffering can lead to our transformation. And our transformation leads to our part that we play in His transformation of the world, which is a good place to look at our Scripture passage for today. Again, Romans 8, verses 18 and 28. Now, in between 18 and 28, uh, you're going to find there that Paul is preaching about present suffering and future glory. He's explaining that a little bit. His point being that we are suffering for now but that it will all be redeemed in time. It will all be transformed in time. And he says that when he says that when he says there in verse 18, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. And he goes on to explain that, that the suffering that we are subject to now will be redeemed. He likens us and all creation as if we're going through labor pains in order to give birth, to give birth to the redeemed bodies and the souls that we will inherit as the sons and daughters of God. And, and we sure didn't choose it for ourselves, Paul says. Amen, right? But God will make it purposeful. God will make glory confident. And our hope is found in the one who can turn this mess around, who can bring healing amidst the pain and redemption of, out of our brokenness. Our hope is exemplified. Our hope is exemplified in the next part of Paul's preaching that we're looking at today, verse, verse 28, which says, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. And there, folks, you have. There you have. There is some good. There is some good that is going to come out of this suffering that you're going through because the Word says, in all things, God works for good. In all things, God is at work to bring forth redemption, to bring forth transformation. Do you believe that today? i got to ask you today, is your hope found in a God who is at work to bring forth good from suffering that you and I are enduring right now? Is your hope found in, in a God who will not leave you to suffer alone, but will rather will participate in your suffering and even transform you through your suffering? And thereby, is your hope found in a God that is transforming His creation, the world, through suffering? I, I have to tell you, you know, as we've gone through this coronavirus pandemic, Together, I, I, I am looking for transformation coming from God, and I don't know about you, but I have seen it. I have seen already transformation of the world through this suffering that we're going through. Some of what I see is, is that we are determining what is really important. I think we're being shown the value of human life. I, I, I think that 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 the putting of others before ourselves. We're finding what that really looks like. I've seen great sacrifice out of our love for others. I have, I have been given more time in all of this. I don't know about you, but I've been given way more time to draw close to God. I'm getting closer in in this. And I've seen others doing this too. I am seeing God transforming the world through Suffer. Number three, God calls us 
to participate in suffering. Do you remember the way of Jesus? We spent a great deal of time looking at that during the season of Lent. And, and we looked at the way of Jesus, right? And the way of Jesus was marked with suffering, was it not? It went through suffering and even painful death before Jesus was resurrected on Easter Sunday, before it was all redeemed. Such is the way of Christ. And he calls us to follow him on his way with him, which leads through times of suffering. And even to dying, dying to our old selves, right? In order to reach redemption. But oh, is it worth it. Again, as the Apostle Paul writes, I consider that our present sufferings aren't worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. We are called to suffer at times. We are called by the one who participated in our suffering for us to participate in His suffering. Because we are called also to assist Him in transforming the world, right? In that transformation process, don't we know all too well, at times calls us to suffer. To have our hearts broken, right? To give up things that we wish we could keep. To give away what we have so that others have enough. We are called to suffer by making our own sacrifices in this life from time to time. In the wake of this pandemic, staying inside our homes and avoiding spreading a potentially deadly virus and, and giving up our freedom and our time, refraining from doing whatever we want, whenever we want, we found out that it can literally save lives, right? For the public safety, we've had to give stuff up. We've, have to, we've had to change our ways, our routines, We've had to do new things. We've had to do some uncomfortable things. We have been called to suffer, but have no fear. While God brings transformation out of our suffering, He is also transforming the world. And we are helping Him do that when we allow Him to transform us. We then go out and we affect change. And we help transform the world around us. We are all connected in this creation of His. Am I right? So are you seeing it? Are you seeing it that out of obedience to Christ, our suffering servant, as the prophet Isaiah called him, if, if you remember in his, in his uh, book, he said those words that I'll never forget, by His wounds we are healed. Out of our obedience to Christ, our suffering servant, we are called. As his disciples, we are called to participate in God's suffering and to participate in the transformation of the world. Listen to me now. Do not give up hope. This suffering that you are going through right now will not last and it will not compare to the glory that will be revealed at the end of it. That is His word to us. That is His promise to us. So hang in there. And let the God who participates in our suffering transform you as well as transform the world through suffering. And, and may that glory be revealed even as you participate in it. And the disciples of Jesus Christ said, Amen. Let us pray. Lord, You have heard us and you know us, you know our hearts, you know that we don't want to suffer. And frankly, we resonate with our Jesus who before his trial and execution on that cross prayed to you that the cup of suffering be taken from him. But then he prayed, but not my will but yours be done. And as painful as it may be, Lord, we must pray that too. He who suffered for us trusted you to redeem the suffering he endured and you did. Our God who participates in suffering brings forth transformation from suffering even as you call us to suffer at times. So Lord, give us faith as we suffer. Give us hope as we suffer. Give us courage and strength as we suffer. And give us redemption as we suffer. Help us to step up when you call us to participate in your transformation of the world. And may the glory that is revealed among the suffering be your glory. And it's in the name of the one who bought our salvation through his own suffering that we pray these things. In Jesus' name, amen.